One of the challenges that we face in is that our scientists need more computing power than what a single computer can provide. And so the way we get uh, the computing power that scientists need are to link these computers together and have them work in parallel or in tandem on any given problem. And so we will have thousands of supercomputer processors uh, working together on a single problem. And so we work with uh, industry so that they can assemble these systems in these large units, connect them together with very fast networks, and then have supporting file systems, all that run in parallel. In essence, in a very simple sense, a uh, supercomputer is just a bunch of desktop computers lashed together. In fact, people have built those kind of systems. Uh, we don't uh, do things quite that simply, but you can look at it in, in that kind of a manner. So you see that the systems that we build lash millions of these uh, laptop computers together with what we call an interconnect, and so they can communicate with each other. And One of the things that we've pioneered within NNSC is the actual integration of the development of the software and the platform. Many of our applications are very complicated codes that uh, aren't uniquely solvable within a certain type of uh, computing environment and you can easily develop the right software but if the hardware doesn't effectively talk with the software uh, you don't get to a rapid solution so both have to go hand in hand and our labs are very expert at uh, both the software development and the right architecture. Then there's a uh, niche uh, high performance computing software industry uh, that also supports our needs. So we just can't go down to your local uh, Best Buy and get uh, an HPC shrink-wrapped uh, you know, CD for our software. We have to work with industry um, and other, other sources to get the software environment that we need. The machine itself is pretty well useless unless you have codes that, uh, that you can calculate something on. So these, these machines are used to do simulations of the, uh, the largest, most demanding science calculation. The codes themselves are a place, I, I like to look at them as the place where we uh, write down everything we know and understand about how a nuclear weapon works. Uh, you do that by writing, writing mathematical equations that become the models that you put in the codes. How you solve those equations uh, uh, are tricky, uh, usually involving lots of calculus, lots of partial differential equations, uh, so it's, uh, it's a real geeky stuff. Now, fundamentally though, when you then put it into a computer code, you have to solve it on what's called a mesh. And so basically you're taking very discrete uh, spatial structures and time structures to solve those equations and so um, how you solve them can actually on occasion influence the answer and you have to be very careful of that uh, if you don't have enough resolution i.e. if your volume size is not small enough you can get a different answer so the people that take it from an equation into a computer calculation are very expert at understanding lots of very complicated mathematics there's also a fundamental problem of did you have all the right physics in there to begin with and so the interaction with the experimental program and the theoretical programs are meant to determine do we have the right physics, do we need more physics, can we uh, not have to use a piece of physics if it uses up a lot of CPU time to calculate that and so basically there's a, this constant dynamic going on between the mathematical communities, the experimental communities, the computer science communities to figure out how you integrate all of this together into an efficient code. We use many different kinds of scientists with uh, different domains of expertise uh, to make the codes work. Some of them you can hire out of college and, and they can come in and be productive very quickly. Some of them it takes us 10 years to train in the kinds of science that are involved in a, in a nuclear weapon. So, uh, so there's a wide range of, of different kinds of, uh, of science that you need to make these things run. There is a, a very wide gamut and that's one of the reasons why NNC is a major leader in supporting academic programs in certain key disciplines because we need those people coming into our labs already trained. These calculations uh, generate that data as they are proceeding. The, these models basically are 
time evolutions of a, um, a bomb going off or a nuclear warhead exploding. And so at each uh, instant in time, they will record key parameters like temperatures, pressures associated with um, particular spatial parts, uh, spatial elements of uh, the warhead. So it's like they take the warhead and map it into uh, little regions and each of those regions, uh, these uh, physical parameters, temperature, pressure, and other things are recorded and then that's all stored. And so the scientists at the end of the simulation will then go and look and see how the temperature changes with time or pressures change and that helps them to understand what's going on in the simulation. Two major sources of data, the first being the historical data from our testing days in Nevada. Uh, that provides a touchstone for everything we do in Stockpile Stewardship. However, to be able to maintain our stockpile without re returning to underground nuclear testing, we've also had to build a, a, a world-leading suite of experimental platforms. So NNSA has been a major leader in the development of the computing systems. We're also a major leader in building the experimental facilities, uh, whether it be the National Ignition Facility at uh, Livermore, which is you know the world-leading facility for high-energy density plasma physics, the Z facility at Sandia, which is probably the best large pulse power machine in existence in the world, uh, whether it's DART, which is uh, with both axes now running as a phenomenal radiographic tool for studying hydrodynamics of large pieces of metal pushed by high explosives, or if it's the ability to conduct very well-diagnosed experiments with plutonium underground at our uh, facility in Nevada where we do subcritical experiments that tell us about the aging of plutonium or the behavior of plutonium under different uh, uh, dynamic conditions. You need all of those tools to provide uh, the fundamental data to either provide uh, fundamental data, testing the integrated performance of a couple of pieces of physics you've put together in the code. You need all of that to basically assure that we can still do this into the future without a re recourse to a uh, future underground nuclear testing.